Welcome to We Are Valley, a podcast by Valley Medical Center located in Renton, Washington. We Are Valley is dedicated to providing you bite sized advice to improve your health and well being and keep you updated on the latest medical guidance. This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be taken as medical advice. So please talk to your provider before making changes that will affect your health. Hi folks, this is Alex McGuire. I'm one of your producers on the We Are Valley podcast and your host for today's episode. So I'm very excited to say that we are joined today by Dr. Wayne Lau from our general surgery clinic. Dr. Lau, thank you so much for being here. Happy to be here, Alex. All right, so we're here today to talk about hernias and all things related to that, um, including treatment options. Um, so why don't we start off just kind of establishing a baseline. Um, what is a hernia? So Alex, a hernia basically is a, a defect or a hole in the uh, abdominal wall or in the groin. Gotcha. Sometimes there are some rare hernias that can occur in the, in the back, but by and large, most hernias are in the front or in the groin. So kind of the, um, the abdomen area. Correct. So yes. below your rib cage um, and around to like your hip area. Yeah, there are inguinal hernias and femoral hernias, which are in the groin. Oh, okay. Yep. And what are, um, what are some common symptoms, things that you would notice that might suggest that you have a hernia? The most common presentation for patients is they actually are in the shower and they just notice a bulge or a lump. Sometimes it's at the belly button, and sometimes it's in the groin, and most of the time when uh, people first identify their hernias, it's not painful. It's just a lump that's there that they didn't notice before. I see. So, um, might not necessarily be painful, but are they ever painful? They can be. If the tissue that's popping through the hole mm -hmm. gets pinched, that can cause pain. Or if hernias get very large, they can also be very painful. Gotcha. So typically get noticed as um, an unusual lump or bulge that wasn't there before. Um, there might be pain, but not necessarily. Yeah, uh, most people will be able to push on the bulge. It'll pop back in, then it'll pop back out. So as the hernias become more advanced, they may pop out and not be able to be popped back in. So they become what we call incarcerated, meaning it's kind of stuck out. Thank you for that. I'm assuming if there's pain that that typically means that it might be something to get checked out. Um, if you don't have any pain, are there other symptoms uh, related to hernias that would be a cause for concern? I think the other symptom that people may present with is, again, this is for more advanced hernias. Mm -hmm. If there's intestine that pops through the hole and the intestine gets blocked, mm -hmm. it could have what we call obstructive symptoms or people could have nausea or vomiting because things are just not moving through the GI tract mm -hmm. very easily. So would you say as a general rule of thumb, if you notice a new lump, it might be something to get checked out? Yeah, I, I think if somebody finds a lump of any sort and they're concerned about it, it should be checked out. They should go see their PCP and have them take a look. Absolutely. And what are some common ways that um, hernias get treated? So uh, first of all, should hernias be treated? There's not a huge amount of urgency with most hernias. Um, and it, for small hernias that don't bother patients, mm -hmm. it's very reasonable to just watch them for a while. When we decide to, to offer a surgery to a patient, there are mm -hmm. different modalities that we can use. There's open surgery, there's laparoscopic surgery, and uh, uh, the latest uh, innovation is robotic surgery. I should back up a little bit and say that one thing about hernias, they're holes. So they will never get smaller and they will never fix themselves. Um, and most of our repairs are done using something called mesh. Mm. So we use something that's synthetic, a synthetic material to buttress the repair. It's pretty rare now that we just do what we call a primary repair where we put a couple stitches in. To, maybe for a very small hernia, we might put a couple sutures in to, to close the defect. Mm -hmm. But by and large, uh, for most hernias, we're gonna place some sort of mesh in there to reinforce the repair. Uh, if mesh is not used for the repair, there's a higher chance that the hernia will come back in the future. Um, we've kind of covered what a hernia looks like, your options if you decide to seek treatment for a hernia. Um, now let's specifically talk about what types of things do we offer here at Valley Medical Center? Yeah, so here at Valley, my partners and I, uh, we do the full gamut of, of hernia surgery from the, the standard uh, inguinal umbilical hernia uh, to really complex abdominal wall reconstructions. Uh, so really anything small, anything large, uh, and, and again, we offer all approaches. Um, we sort of tailor the, the repair to each individual patient, whatever seems to be the, the most appropriate repair for that patient tailoring solutions to patients um, is, I think, really a, a cornerstone of good surgery, right? We wanna make sure that it, it's the right solution for the individual. Exactly, so one repair for one patient with a certain type of hernia may mm -hmm. not be the, the, the right repair for another patient. 
You mentioned uh, robotic surgery as kind of um, the latest and greatest in terms of uh, hernia repair options. Can you um, talk a little bit more about what makes it a beneficial option to consider? What are some of the reasons that you would choose or suggest, I should say, a robotic surgery versus um, an open surgery or laparoscopic? Um, so the traditional uh, way of fixing hernias is open surgery, which involves a bigger incision. Uh, and so the recovery time is typically longer and patients will likely have more discomfort. Uh, when we talk about minimally invasive surgery, then that's where laparoscopic and robotic surgery come in. Uh, laparoscopic surgery is where we make small incisions, uh, usually in the abdomen, uh, and place instruments inside the abdomen and fix the hernias that way. Uh, and robotics takes us to the next level where we actually have the robotic arms holding the instruments and we're controlling the robot from a console that's about 20 feet away from the, the patient. The benefits of robotic surgery is that the, the optics are, are, are really good, uh, better than laparoscopic, and the instruments are, are very sophisticated. We can uh, do maneuvers and work in really tight spaces and tie knots and really do some amazing things, again, through three small little holes, three or four small little holes. Patients, again, are spared a big incision. Um, they recover sooner, they have less pain. So all in all, for a lot of patients, the robotic approach is, is the better way to go. Um, and when you say better optics, you mean that it's easier to see the area where you're actively doing the surgery? Right. It's a kind of a stereoscopic 3D figure for us, and um, the optics are so good that we, we can see layers of tissue that we weren't able to see with our equipment before. That's really incredible. Uh, yeah, I can definitely understand. And I, I would also guess, you know, it takes a little bit of the human error out, right, where you don't have to worry about adjusting wrists and hands quite as much because robotic arms probably have a little bit steadier of pivots and adjustment. Well, it's also the, the surgeon has complete control of all four arms. So I can move my camera in and out. I can move my instruments where I want them. Uh, so it, it's really a lot of control for the surgeon. You're Plus, we get to sit down as we're doing the operation. Uh, I watch kind of an intro and how-to that we have on our YouTube page mm -hmm. where it introduces what our robotic surgery setup is. Um, so that's really cool to hear about how it gets used in practice. What does recovery from hernia surgery look like? I know you mentioned if you have robotic or laparoscopic, your recovery time might be a little bit quicker. But like traditionally, what is the outline of what a patient will go through recovery-wise? So there's a spectrum of recovery. It depends on really what type of hernia we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. If it's a small little umbilical hernia or small groin hernia, um, I should say most hernia repairs that we do, the patients are up and walking in the evening of the surgery or the next day. Wow. I would say the majority, if not, uh, well, it's not all patients, but uh, a great majority of patients are actually outpatient operations. Most patients don't spend the night in the hospital. Uh, again, this is uh, where robotics has made a big difference. Uh, where in the past we've had to make bigger incisions, patients would be in the hospital for a couple of days, now they, they go home the same day. Mm. Um, and, and we do, with the robotics, uh, we do a lot of what we call abdominal wall reconstruction. And so where patients have really large hernias, usually from previous operations, so they have what we call incisional hernias. Uh, they've had operations where the abdominal wall has been weakened by their, their incisions, and they have these gigantic um, bulges, uh, and they've lost some function of their core. And so we can fix those hernias robotically, again, through the three small incisions, um, whereas before it would be a large, long incision. Right, yeah. yeah, and then the things that come along with long incisions is healing time, right? Or so infections. That, yeah, also. totally, yeah, yeah, different complications. So infection sure. rates are, are, are less with robotics. Hospital stay is less. Mm -hmm. As most patients, depending on how large the repair is, will be on pain medication for uh, two to three days. Some people with minor hernias, smaller yeah. hernias, don't take any narcotics. They can get by with just Motrin and Tylenol. I'm sure that is very dependent on the patient, right, and different it is. tolerances. Yes. But I mean, really cool to think about when you look at like larger scale, what does that look like as an industry and being able to say, yeah, this is this is industry standard in terms of turnaround time and um, getting you back up on your feet and feeling good. Exactly. Yeah, getting yes. people back to um, doing what they love and being able to fully have that under their control. It's a little bit variable, but most surgeons uh, will still place some uh, you know, weight limitations after sure. the operation. You know, walking is great. Even hiking, going upstairs is fine. We just prefer that the patients not strain their, their core too much after the operation. And depending on which surgeon you talk to, some people it's two weeks, some it's four, some it's six. So a little bit variable, but we just try to be a little bit careful. So maybe not um, recommended to like move heavy things Correct. or like lift heavy boxes and move stuff around right after. Two to four weeks, it sounds like, is pretty... Um, typical in terms of a range that might get suggested or recommended? Yes, I think most of my patients who have uh, desk jobs are probably mm -hmm. back to work within less than a week, 
Wow, that's yeah. incredible. And with repair, how quickly do patients see the change in symptoms? Like if they had pain, is that something that's immediately gonna be gone as soon as that's meshed over and stitched up? Well, initially they're gonna be pretty sore from the operation itself, but uh, if they were having obstructive symptoms from the hernia mm -hmm. uh, or tissue was being trapped, then uh, that will go away. But they're, they're gonna be sore for, regardless of what repair we do, the people will be sore for probably a week to 10 days. I guess that makes sense, right? Yeah. Our abdominal wall is a muscle, um, yes. and muscles are where we tend to get sore. Well, that's wonderful to know. Tell me a little bit, um, what are some things that a hernia patient should consider? Asking a potential surgeon if you are considering pursuing surgery for a hernia. I think it's very important for the patient to understand the approach being used and okay. why. So uh, just to get clarity on that. And really just have, um, you know, uh, good expectations in terms of what to, what to expect after uh, the operation and during recovery so that uh, both the surgeon and the patient are on the same page. Really yeah. clear and open communication. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. Um, is there anything that we haven't touched on that you maybe want to additionally talk about? I should mention that uh, we did receive our certification for a center of ex excellence for robotic surgery. So uh, that's a across many different specialties, but hernia being mm -hmm. one part of the robotics program, we're proud of that. And uh, I think we, we do a, a great job of caring for our patients. I would agree. Okay, well, folks, I think that wraps us up. So if you are looking to learn more about hernias, hernia repair, or other types of surgery, we recommend you check out our website at valleymed.org slash surgical dash services. We will include this URL as well as other great resources related to surgery in our show notes. So be sure to check those out. Our guest today has been Dr. Wayne Lau. Dr. Lau, thank you again so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. This has been We Are Valley, a podcast produced by Valley Medical Center in Renton, Washington, as a part of our mission to care for our community like family. If you liked this episode, be sure to subscribe to our feed for more great health content. And for more health resources or to find a provider, visit valleymed.org. Thank you for joining us.